Hi, welcome to this short video uh, where we're going to analyze a market that's subject to an externality uh, using a welfare table. Normally we wouldn't do this, we'd just be focused on looking at our uh, market and finding the market quantity here, comparing it to the efficient quantity here, uh, and then when we do that comparison we can see there's going to be some deadweight loss because the market's not efficient. We might be interested in quantifying that deadweight loss, thinking about corrective taxation. So in general, we, we probably don't need to break out a full welfare table and do this analysis since it takes some time, but it's still a good thing to be able to do, uh, and it's definitely something that we expect you to be able to do in this class. All right, so we'll analyze two situations. First, we'll look at you know, the market without any government policies in place. I'm just calling that normal. And then we'll put a, an optimal corrective tax in place um, because this is a negative externality. We wanna tax the market to get to our uh, efficient level. And we'll see that when we move from social surplus in the normal case to social surplus with the tax, the social surplus will increase. That's the definition of there being dead weight loss in the normal case. All right, so first I'm going to need to uh, do some labeling here. So here's our market quantity, dot, 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 Q market. Uh, I can label the market price here, P, star I guess um, and then if I put a tax in place I'd want to put the tax wedge in so that we get to the efficient quantity but first we've got to identify the efficient quantity we can see here that the marginal social cost curve <coughs> is already labeled for us and we can see that it's basically the supply curve here shifted upward because there's a negative production externality uh, but we don't have the marginal social benefit curve labeled. So where is that? Hopefully you said it's, uh, it's just the demand curve. Implicitly, we're saying there's no consumption externalities. So the demand curve is our marginal benefit, both private and social marginal benefit curve. So if I put the tax wedge in place to get to where MSC equals MSB, I'm going to want this quantity, Q efficient. Uh, and the wedge would go then right here. So the consumer would be paying PC, the producer's receiving PP, and we have our quantity labeled. So now I can label each of these little areas, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and uh, we'll actually need this here, A, B, C, D, F, G, H. All right. So now we're just gonna break down, uh, find the consumer surplus, producer surplus. For the government in this normal case without a tax, we can, we, can already, we can actually just go ahead and fill that one in now. That's not applicable, there's no taxes or subsidies. And then the new thing will be filling in this externality row, right? Nor before when we didn't have externalities, we just kind of left this row out of our tables. But now third parties are being affected. They're either being hurt or they're benefiting. And we need to include those costs and benefits in our analysis. If we, if we leave them out, then it wouldn't really be right to talk about social surplus since we're leaving out part of society. All right, so consumer surplus, when we have uh, the market quantity here and they're paying this price P star, they get A, B, C, F. So we can fill that in. I'm not gonna put the pluses here. I'm just gonna list the letters A, B, C, F but it's implicitly, it's like adding up all of these areas. For producer surplus, that should be pretty quick too. They're being paid P star above the supply curve. They get D, G, E. So we'll fill in D, G, E. As we said, there's no government involved here. Now the externality is this height here, uh, the gap between marginal social cost and supply, right? Supply here, marginal social cost here, for all the units that are actually produced. So that'll be all of this, keep going, more, 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 all of that, all the way, so basically C, D, E, F, G, H. Uh, so I'll fill that in, C, D, E, F, G, H. And then we need to make note that this is negative, right? This is a bad thing, this is a, a negative production externality like pollution, so we're gonna be subtracting all of that stuff from our consumer and producer surplus. Um, in terms of intuition, we know that 
in this case, or we can see uh, that this is like an externality of a fixed amount, right? So it's like this height, which is some number of dollars, say $5, and then it's for each of Q market goods. So kind of like when we had a tax where it was say a $5 tax times Q goods, it, that formed a rectangle. Here the externality shows up as basically a rectangle, except it's been kind of stretched into a parallelogram. But you can see how if you kind of push this parallelogram so that it was flat, it would become a rectangle. And specifically to be a rectangle with a height of whatever number of dollars of externality there is per unit times this quantity. Um, all right, now we can do the analysis with the tax. Producers like, uh, sorry, consumers like normal with the tax have been hurt, they just get A. There's nothing new about that analysis. Producers just get E, they've been hurt. The government collects B, C, D in tax revenue. That's positive because they're getting the money. And then the externality has been reduced, right? So we're not producing Q market goods anymore. We shade in this, if we wanted to shade it in for the externality, maybe I'll go ahead and do it. We'd shade in this, 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 but then we stop at Q efficient because we only produce up to Q efficient goods. So there is no cost of the externality beyond Q efficient. You, you, you don't actually get the pollution if you don't keep producing the goods. So the externality is just gonna be negative C, D, E. So negative C, D, E. So now we can add everything up. A bunch of stuff cancels, so let's do this laborious process. On the left, we have A, B, C, and a negative C, so that'll cancel. A D and a negative D, so that cancels. E and a negative E, F and a negative F, G and a negative G. So we get A, B minus H as our total over here. So A plus B minus H. All right, and then over here with the tax, we have A, nothing to cancel, E, that cancels with this E, C cancels, D cancels, we just get A plus B. So we can see that with the tax, our social surplus is A plus B. In the normal case, it's A plus B minus H, so H is the deadweight loss. And that's the same thing we get here, I'll do it in dark blue, if we use our tip base shade method, where the tip would be at Q efficient, the base would be here at Q market, and we'd start from the efficient point and just shade towards that market quantity, shading in exactly H like we expected. So the table pretty much gets us back to what we, we already knew, although it spells out exactly like, uh, you know, if we had numbers to put on this, we could say in numerical terms, how big is CDE, how big is CDE, FGH, the cost of the externalities. We can see how even though, the, even though the market is more efficient with the tax, it's not like consumers are happy about it. As always with the tax, they're hurt. They went from A, B, C, F of surplus to just A. Um, and that reinforces the point that when we're talking about efficiency, we're just talking about for society as a whole, how much surplus is there. It went up here, but that doesn't mean society, each individual part of society, like the consumers or the producers are happy about the tax. The consumers and producers are both hurt by it but the government benefits and there's less negative externality, so that's, uh, so both of them benefit. All right, so I would go ahead and just draw a generic externality, say for a, a positive consumption externality, and try to repeat this analysis and verify that when you compare the normal situation with then the optimal corrective subsidy, since it's a positive externality, you'd want to subsidize it, that you get that the dead weight loss is, um, you know, what you'd expect, what you label. Like here, we expected it to be H, and by comparing this and this, we can see that the dead weight loss of just leaving the normal situation is H. All right, so that was a video that wasted nine minutes of your life. Uh, hopefully I didn't ramble too much and hopefully you played it at like 1.5x speed um, so that you didn't waste too much time. Thanks, bye.